Hello you outstanding little nibbleheads, it's Andy Stanton here. Yes, that's me. And I'm here to read you a little bit from You're a Bad Man, Mr. Gum, which is my first Mr. Gum book. And I'm going to read you the first chapter of You're a Bad Man, Mr. Gum, and it is called The Garden of Mr. Gum. And it goes a little bit sort of something like this. Chapter One. The Garden of Mr. Gum. Mr. Gum was a fierce old man with a red beard and two bloodshot eyes that stared out at you like an octopus curled up in a bad cave. He was a complete horror who hated children, animals, fun and corn on the cob. What he liked was snoozing in bed all day, being lonely and scowling at things. He slept and scowled and picked his nose and ate it. Most of the townsfolk of Lamonic Bibber avoided him and the children were terrified of him. Their mothers would say, go to bed when I tell you to, or Mr Gum will come and shout at your toys and leave slime on your books. That usually did the trick. Mr Gum lived in a great big house in the middle of town. Actually, it wasn't that great because he had turned it into a disgusting pigsty. The rooms were filled with junk and pizza boxes. Empty milk bottles lay around like wounded soldiers in a war against milk. And there were old newspapers from years and years ago with headlines like Vikings invade Britain and world's first newspaper invented today. Insects lived in the kitchen cupboards, not just small insects, but great big ones with faces and names and jobs. Mr Gum's bedroom was absolutely grimsters. The wardrobe contained so much mould and old cheese that there was hardly any room for his moth-eaten clothes. And the bed was never made. I don't mean that the duvet was never put back on the bed. I mean the bed had never even been made. Mr Gum hadn't gone to the bother of assembling it. He had just chucked all the bits of wood on the floor and dumped a mattress on top. There was broken glass in the windows and the ancient carpet was the colour of unhappiness and smelt like a toilet. Anyway, I could be here all day going on about Mr Gum's house, but I think you've got the idea. Mr Gum was an absolute laser who couldn't be bothered with niceness and tidying and brushing his teeth, or anyone else's teeth for that matter. But, and as you can hear, it's a big but, he was always extremely careful to keep his garden tidy. In fact, Mr Gum kept his garden so tidy that it was the prettiest, greeniest, floweriest, gardeniest garden in the whole of Lamonic Bibber. Here's how amazing it was. Think of a number between one and ten. Multiply that number by five. Add on 350. Take away 11. Throw all those numbers away. Now think of an amazing garden. Whatever number you started with, you should now be thinking of an amazing garden. And that's how amazing Mr Gum's garden was. In spring, it was bursting with crocuses and daffodils. In summer, there were roses, sunflowers, and those little, little blue ones. What are they called again? You know, those blue ones, they look a bit like dinosaurs. Anyway, there were tons of them. In autumn, the leaves from the big oak tree covered the lawn, turning it gold like a gigantic leafy robot. In winter, it was winter. No one in town could understand how Mr Gum's garden could be so pretty, greeny, flowery and gardeny when his house was such a filthy tip. Oh, maybe he just likes gardening said Jonathan Ripples, the fattest man in town. Perhaps he's trying to win a garden contest, said a little girl called Peter. I reckon he just quite likes gardening, said Martin Laundrette, who ran the laundrette. Oi, that was my idea, said Jonathan Ripples. No, it wasn't, said Martin Laundrette. You can't prove it, that's so. In fact, they were all wrong. The real reason was this. Mr Gum had to keep the garden tidy because otherwise an angry fairy would appear in his bathtub and start whacking him with a frying pan. You see, there is always a simple explanation for things. 
Mr Gum hated the fairy, but he couldn't work out how to get rid of it, so his only choice was to do the gardening, or it was pan wax. And so, life went on in the peaceful town of Lemonic Bibber. Everyone got on with their business, and Mr Gum snoozed the days away in his dirty house and did lots of gardening he didn't want to do. And nothing much ever happened, and the sun went down over the mountains. The end. Oh, sorry. I nearly forgot. Something did happen once. That's what this story is about. I do apologise. Right, what was it? Um, oh, of course. How could I be so stupid? It was that massive whopper of a dog. How on earth could I forget about him? Right now. One day, a massive whopper of a dog... Actually, I think we better have a new chapter. Sorry about all this, everyone. And then we're on to chapter two. I'll just read you a couple of lines because I like chapter two. Chapter two, a massive whopper of a dog. One day, a massive whopper of a dog came to live on the outskirts of town. Where did he come from? Nobody knows. What strange things had he seen? Nobody knows. What was his name? Everybody knows. It was Jake the dog. He was a furry wobbler and friendly as toast, and he soon made himself very popular. He would often come into town to play with the children and give them rides on his enormous broad back. No matter how many children wanted to laugh on him, he never grew tired. He was just that sort of dog. If he had been a person, he probably would have been a king, or at the very least, a racing car driver with a cool helmet. Or perhaps he would have been a gardener, because Jake the dog loved nothing more than playing in gardens. There you go, that's all I'm going to read you for now. If you want to find out whose garden Jake the dog ends up playing in, and what it all leads to, you're going to have to read. You're a bad man, Mr Gum. <laughs>